Good morning, everyone. We're here, and uh, we're here to <laughs> answer your questions. Uh, it's another beautiful, warm day in, in Maryland. It's actually freezing out there. Um, if there's anything that we say, you know, that gets even close to providing medical care, we're not going to do that. This is just for your own educational research. Um, so that's our disclaimer. So check before your doctor before it, taking any of the recommendations. Does that sound good? Is yes. that good? good disclaimer there? Perfect. Good. All right. So uh, hopefully everything's going to go smooth with the, with the call. So I'm going to jump right in. And uh, Tan is on the line from uh, Oakland, California. You had a question about the gallbladder. Go ahead, Tan. Good morning, Dr. Berg and Karen. Good morning. Good morning. I want to let you know that I was at both of the summits, and I'm so looking forward to the one coming up. And if anybody's listening who's never been to a summit, you got to do it. It's an amazing experience. Oh, Make that's a little plug there. That's yeah. great, because we just got the video done, and we're going to be launching any day now. So... Yeah, I hope you can make it this time. We're going to have a blast. The speakers are going to be amazing. I agree with Tan. Beautiful. Fun, fun time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let me get right into my question. So mm -hmm. you really have are an expert on the gallbladder, and I have been uh, following you and doing healthy keto since the end of 2016. Um, but basically 16-8, been doing OMAD for the last couple months. I was having a lot of gallbladder pain, which I assumed was sludge, an ultrasound, when I first started following your, your path in 2017, said there was a tiny bit of sludge or a small polyp. I've just been following your entire protocol. My um, uh, fasting insulin is 2. My recent A1C is 5.7, a little high. I do have a lot of belly fat and probably some kind of blood sugar dysregulation. Anyway, the recent ultrasound three weeks ago after a ton of pain showed multiple gallbladder polyps and a very distended liver and I just am at my wits end I don't know what to do but I thought I'd ask you okay great well so a couple things I would like to mention about that um, it's great that your insulin is too that's that's pretty low that's awesome uh, as far as your a1c are you finding that you're pretty good with your diet but maybe certain times of the week or the or the month that you go off it, off the program. Uh, I'm a long time sugar addict who's got it pretty much under control, but occasionally I'll do a very organic turmeric bar with coconut sugar, and I've stopped that. That's all. Okay. After I get learned about this, and also I should mention I did just recently quit drinking. I know you don't drink. I've been trying to stop for a long time. I did quit a month ago. Okay. Awesome. Well. I only drink on the weekends. No, no, I don't drink at all. Um, the, here's, the, here's the point about that. Um, the A1C is an average of three months. So if you, um, you know, kind of go off every so often, your A1C will creep up a little bit. Even though you check on a daily basis, it might be good. Um, so your blood sugars, um, that would just measure an average. So that would make sense. I'm glad you came off uh, the alcohol. I think, I think now um, your liver, your gallbladder is just going to actually going to have to take some time to um, undo some of the damage. Um, as far as the polyp, you know, a lot of times they're benign. They don't do anything. They just sit there. Um, but the fact that your liver is distended just tells me there was stress in that area. So keto is going to be exactly what you need to do. Insulin resistance is, I'm, I'm sorry, in intermittent fasting is exactly what you're going to do combined with that. But the other thing that you really want to make sure is you have enough cruciferous vegetables in the diet. There's so many um, properties, phytonutrients and cruciferous vegetables that are going to help you um, that you want to beef up those vegetables, no pun intended. Uh, but one of the best vegetables you want to consume a lot of for the gallbladder and the liver is, Karen's going to answer it. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> what's, the, what's the best vegetable for the gallbladder? We covered that last week. You know it. You like them. Brussels sprouts. Close. You like, remember those little red things? Oh, beets. I mean, radishes. <laughs> good, yeah. Beets are good, too. But radishes are the top. So I don't know if you like those, Tan, but I think if you start eating radishes, that would be very beneficial, not just for the liver, but for the gallbladder. Um, so you want to start doing the big salads now. 
And then I think you're just going to have to give it time, uh, go real high quality, and then ride the wave, do periodic prolonged fasting to give your liver a chance to also heal, and that experience the autophagy, which is going to clean out some of the old damage you know, proteins in the liver. But I think you're on the right track. Just you have to give more time. Stay really clean. Not even a little bit of coconut uh, sugar. And I hope to see you at the uh, summit. Thanks for your call. And Catherine, you're from Tampa, Florida. Glad you're on the air. Hi. Hi. You had a question. Hello. Go ahead. I did. So I've been doing keto for about two years now. I do intermittent fasting as well. Um, I do have estrogen dominance to the point of actually like lactation. Mm. And I also take your den. So I'm wondering what should be my next plan of action? Yeah. Do you, are you consuming any dairy at all? Yes. My boyfriend makes these amazing keto pies that I can't resist. Oh, got and it. He uses heavy cream. And then that it, it's organic, but I do consume dairy. Okay. And do you have any skin issues, like acne at all? Yes. I've been struggling with acne for like two, three years. Okay. And um, are you doing any soy in your diet? No, no soy. Okay. None. All right. I think this is going to be really, really simple. Are you ready for this, Catherine? Yep. Okay. Um, you're doing the right thing. The estrogen balance with DIM is something that I, uh, I, I actually recommend for people with this imbalances with estrogen. It can just help maintain healthy estrogen balance, but it actually comes from the cruciferous vegetables. That you need to increase the cruciferous vegetables because those vegetables help to regulate um, estrogen a lot better than anything that I know. Um, but unfortunately, I think you're going to have to take the dairy and put it to the side for a little bit. I, you're going to find your skin is going to clear right up. There's just so many um, uh, hormonal factors in dairy. Um, dairy's meant for a cow um, and growing a baby calf. Um, to, um, and so it's filled with all sorts of growth hormones, and, um, including estrogen. So certain people are sensi sensitive to it. I do consume dairy on a regular basis. I make sure that it's, of course, grass-fed, organic. Um, but for some people, like yourself, I think if you give that up, you'll see a huge change um, in those side effects that you have right now. And I would also really add in a good amount of the cruciferous vegetables um, on a daily basis. And I think you're going to be in good shape. So go ahead and try that and let us know how, how, you work, how it works. Okay, Karen, what do, we, what do we have coming in from social media? Where are people located? Which question do you want answered? Is that a, that's a lot at once, isn't it? It's a no lot of questions. questions. Just, Let's go with the location first. Okay. Well, uh, so far, Germany, Canada, Scotland, Tanzania. I was wondering about that. That's Singapore, a Saudi Arabia, Romania, all of the United States, including the country of Texas, <laughs> Madagascar. I know you Texans. You, it is, is a country. That, is that next to the Ecuador, Equator uh, location? Okay. Yes, and Peru is right next to Mexico. Right. Inside joke, but let's see. Sweden, Philippines, and that's all I have so far. Silicon Valley, now people are telling me. Uh, Wisconsin. That's a nice country. That is a country all on its own. Okay. It is. Well, I have some questions here. Yeah. So, uh, Karen on Facebook. Mm hmm is a 57-year-old woman. Do you see any similarities between this person and myself? Do I see any similarities between Karen and Facebook? And Who's 57? Who's 57? Well, same age? Same name. Same name and same yeah, age? Same <laughs> age, <laughs> same name, same sex, and wow. thinning hair and plateauing. She's been on keto for a year. Okay. Right? A year, okay. Karen? Well, she's on keto for a while. So talk about thinning hair and plateauing. It comes up a lot. Well, there's, there's, um, there's two things, um, two factors here. Um, obviously, if you're plateauing, we want to we really just target in on that estrogen, keep the estrogen down. 
The two um, big things that will bring the estrogen to a good place would be, of course, fasting and, and carbs, right? Um, Say it again. The two things that will help bring estrogen in a good place, normal. Fasting and carbs, you said. Low carb. Fasting low and low carb. carb. I just want to see if you picked big that up here. difference. So we want to go low carb and we want to fast longer. So we want to bring the carbs down to maybe below 10 grams a day. So that's cutting out a lot of stuff. And then also we want to do longer fasting. Now if we look at the, the two side by side, um, actually this is probably a, no it's not, it's not going to be a quiz because I think I'm going to already answer it. But if we take a look at the, the, the benefits of both of those, intermittent fasting provides you more benefits than keto. Now if you combine them, you get a compounded effect even more than them separately. So, because when you actually fast, not only are you lowering carbs in your diet, you're actually, you're not eating, so you're not stimulating insulin because every time you eat, you stimulate insulin regardless of what you eat. So, the combination is important. So, to answer that question, we want to find out, like, what is she doing now? And let's, let's make it more. Um, the other make thing... Make it more. Yeah, like, make it more intense or less carbs, you know what I'm talking about, yeah. right? Okay. So we also want to um, look at your, her stress level. We want to look at her sleep. We want to look at exercise. Does she exercise? Those factors. Okay. If there's any health problems, obviously address that. But as far as the hair loss goes, I think the most important thing is the trace minerals. Trace minerals are the activator, activators for proteins, protein growth, enzymes. Um, but let's say you're taking the trace minerals and it's still not working. It could be because your stomach is too alkaline. So you need to actually do apple cider vinegar or betaine hydrochloride to acidify the stomach. When you take them, take them on an empty stomach, boom, go in there, help grow your hair back. You know what's really interesting is you do compare Karen to Karen. Karen has a lion's mane worth of hair. So with all the talk of um, you know, hair loss or so on. Karen, obviously, whatever Karen's doing, do it because her hair is full and lush and beautiful, and people comment all the time. So, uh, it, it, what uh, you are, what you eat, and apparently, Karen's eating, uh, doing healthy keto, and just look at her go. We were going to do a video on what Karen eats, so uh, I think we have to do that still because people want to know <laughs> how does Karen end up with that beautiful head of hair? Every once in a while, I have a little baby hairs. Oh, that must be rough. All right. Okay. All right, people. Let's. Okay, Karen, you got a, a lot of data. So I, I hope you can think with all that. There are videos on the website, though, for thinning hair and for plateauing if you need a recap. And you can just ask me the next question, just a yes or no, and that'll be quicker. <laughs> Here's an interesting question Sherry. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Cheryl. Okay on YouTube wants to know which products of yours contain vitamin C and how much? Yeah, presently we have, um, just the wheatgrass has a good amount of vitamin C, but there is a one new product that we are coming up with. It's a, a chewable vitamin C, yeah. which is going to be released in about one week, so stay tuned for that. Um, we went back and forth to uh, get the taste just right, but it's really cool because it has um, more than enough more than the RDA is just from one chewable and there's no anything bad in it it's just berries and there's no sugar like some of the other stuff and uh, I think people are gonna like it taste great, delicious great uh, lead into that Cheryl thanks for that question and then um, Johnny from YouTube also he's been on keto for a year mm -hmm. and he's get, continuing to get pancreatitis uh, not that you treat pancreatitis but do you know why that would happen or U usually what you can do to support it? Most of the time, um, from my experience, the person's also on some other medication that has the side effect of pancreatitis. So if there's something else like that, if you're on medication, check with your doctor, that could be it. But it's very unusual that you would get inflammation of the pancreas if you are on the healthy version of keto that I recommend as well as intermittent fasting. It's, mm -hmm. like, it's very unusual. So I would look at what you're eating, the quality of food, and and um, clean that up. I do know that sometimes if there is a uh, stone that's stuck in your bile duct, 
that can back up the ducts through the pancreas and create inflammation. That could be a possibility, in which case you would need purified bile salts. Um, so these are all factors, but it's hard to evaluate that without really getting a history. So it's usually probably not going to be related to keto or uh, intermittent fasting. Okay, good. Yeah. All Your right. turn. Okay. So we're going to go to Oklahoma. Okay. Esther has a question on hair loss and selenium dosage. Are you there? Yes. Good morning. Good Dr. morning. And good morning, Miss Karen. Um, I spoke to you two weeks ago today, and I told you I'm losing my hair. It's breaking. It's falling. My nails are bad, and all that. Huh? And you huh? mentioned about selenium, zinc, iodine, and copper. What I did was uh, earlier this week I ordered your keto essential amino. Mm-hmm. And that takes care of, I know, the amino acids, you know, the essential amino acids. But how do I compensate for the stress minerals? And if I have to buy them individually, oh, how many micrograms or how many grams do I get? Okay. Or do you have any uh, supplements containing this stress minerals? Uh, that's one of my questions. In the short question okay. That bone broth take you out of ketosis. I'm worried. Okay, so um, let me bone broth can take you out of ketosis because it's a protein for sure. That's one thing that you probably want to avoid. I will be doing a video today on all the things that you can consume when you're doing fasting that won't necessarily knock you out for too long. But um, just want to let people know these. These um, these questions are not staged. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> I for know, example, like back to back for like the minerals that we we're just we're finally coming out with uh, our um, new upgrade of our trace minerals because the last version was liquid and it it's just um, it's a bit too messy. So this one's in a capsule, but it has all the trace minerals in the right uh, blend. Um, it's plant based, plus it has some additional trace minerals in higher amounts that I really liked. Um, so that that's something that you could do, um, but if you're ask, if you just wanted to take selenium, because selenium is uh, very unique as an antioxidant, you want to make sure you take like roughly about 55 milligram micrograms, 55 micrograms, not milligrams. But selenium is um, a very very powerful antioxidant, so it would be good to take if you have Hashimoto's or some inflammatory condition like or like inflam um, autoimmune conditions, things like that. Um, but it's really good to counter that. And it's also a precursor for something called glutathione, which is a, the main huge antioxidant in the liver. So, but there's some good amount of selenium in the new trace minerals, which is gonna be, basically it's already arrived, probably on Monday we'll release it. So it's, stay tuned, it's, I'm excited to take it myself because it's been a work in progress because the I wanted to really make it better than it was before. But that was not a staged call. <laughs> All right. Thanks for your call. Okay. Karen. Yeah. Do we have some real interesting questions coming over there? <laughs> what do we got? <laughs> They're all interesting. Okay. So I have two questions here. And then I, I'm going to kind of package because we're getting a lot of similar questions. Okay. That would be number three. Okay. Sergio on Facebook wants to know if the electrolytes break a fast. They're just minerals. There's no calories. So, no, they won't break a fast okay. at all. That was your yes or no question. Thank you. You're welcome. I like this. Now, um, Debbie on Facebook, she is 63, and she wants to know what she can do about minimizing wrinkles on her face. Now, again, guys, this is not a stage question because I was just about to talk about that. Um, it's going to be on one of the videos today. It's just very interesting how these questions are They're matching you. what I'm going to be talking about. That's so, right. so if we look at the relationship between keto or intermittent fasting in your skin and wrinkles, there's, a, there's actually quite a bit of data on this, um, not just in uh, human studies, but animal studies. So if you have a pet mouse, for example, and you want well, to... Right. improve their skin or their, wrinkles. their hair, that you want to put them on a ketogenic diet. Big situation. But if we actually can, if we do both of those, um, we're going to create some interesting effect on your skin. Number one, 
normally when you age, you actually have a loss of collagen. Um, so that's going to slow down. So that aging factor, you're going to actually have more collagen in the skin when you do fasting. Fasting also kicks, like the fasting mimics uh, a little bit of starvation. And so your body has all these amazing things that kick in there to counter that, that kind of slow down the aging process. So you have decreased inflammation of the skin. You get, you get rid of like aging little spots. You, you actually have um, uh, more blood flow to the skin. The top two layers of the skin um, start slowing down and aging. I mean, like all these really interesting things. So I'm going to, I'll do a complete video on it. But um, the blood flow alone from the activation of um, certain things when you fast is going to be huge because um, you're going to see like, like the elasticity is going to be softer skin, not as rigid, um, just healthier looking glow. So okay. that would be... Does she need to start taking any collagen or just... No, no. That, that actually doesn't do much. Uh, skin is a reflection of um, a lot of things with just good nutrients in general. You would want the, like the, definitely the trace minerals, good amount of vitamin C, that's going to be important. But you really, th those don't work unless you have the healthy version of keto and intermittent fasting implemented. So I wouldn't actually add any supplements unless you're doing this correctly. Because if you're not doing it correctly and you're using the supplements, you're not going to see change. It's just going to be expensive urine. Go right through you. Okay, good. Now, Karen, I do have a, uh, a little quiz here. Oh, okay. Speaking about skin, um, and s out of all the things that you can consume, what is the number one thing that is the most beneficial for the health of your skin? Let's see if you guys know this answer. Okay, out of everything. Yeah. Kirsten's watching. Oh, good. All right, so you let them okay. answer, and uh, Kirsten's like, ah, they see me. Yeah. We see you. I tell you what, um, Frank had a question. He's from Toronto, can Canada. He's listening. I'm just going to answer the question because it's frozen here. He has a, a large prostate, and uh, he wants to know keto one meal a day. He might be doing that one one meal a day. He's on keto, and he's doing high intensity exercise. So he probably has a question about, well, are those the right thing for an enlarged prostate? And the, and the answer is absolutely, uh, because if you look at a high-carb diet, that creates inflammation, and that creates uh, a lot of other issues related to um, the anabolic effect of things. Like the anabolic effect of insulin, having high insulin, it makes things grow. So if you actually do keto, you, you can improve that area of your body. Um, but I would definitely... Frank, if I were you, I would um, eliminate all dairy if you have the prostate issue. Eliminate dairy. You really want to also work on your liver because that's going to actually help the balance of testosterone. So that's going to be important. And don't be afraid to consume a good amount of cruciferous vegetables because, believe it or not, sometimes the um, excess, um, excessive amounts of estrogen in the diet and in the body can contribute to an enlarged prostate. So those are th some things that I would recommend, Frank. All right. Okay. Answers are pouring in. What do we got? So a lot of people are yeah. saying water. Okay. Vitamin D, and then another big answer is vitamin C. Okay. And then there's fats and oils. Mm -hmm. A couple of food things like cruciferous, avocados or greens. Um, one person said B. 12. Okay. Good. Um, water, water. Good fat, guesses. Water. Good guesses. Okay. So the answer is cod liver oil. No. Okay. Now ask me why. Why? Because it has four things. <coughs> Actually, yeah, it has four things. It yeah, has. I took two this morning. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so cod liver oil doesn't just have two of the most important uh, omega 3 fatty acids like DHA and EPA. But it also has vitamin D and vitamin A, which is really good for the skin. Now, it doesn't have a lot of vitamin E, and you can get that from your leafy greens. But for your skin, you should be consuming cod liver oil on a regular basis because it's a, a powerful thing for your skin to make it look healthy and give it the fats. Um, because it has fats, 
and your skin is fat, you'll actually provide all the precursors to building healthy skin, especially if you have dry skin too. So cod liver oil is the top of the food chain for things for the skin. But you guys, I have another uh, very important, difficult quiz question coming up, so don't click off yet. Okay, good. All right. Okay, good. So uh, getting some similar uh, questions here. And always we have some new people joining us. So mm -hmm. let me ask you some really basic questions. Okay. What We throw a lot of words around here. Yeah. We assume everybody knows. Okay. What does keto actually mean? All right. What does keto mean? What does keto mean? Keto is short for ketones, but let me define ketones. Ketones are an um, alternative fuel in your body. So you can run your body on sugar or ketones. And the way ketones uh, are made is from your own fat. So when your fat is burned, you actually, it can turn into ketones and you can use it as fuel. It's a superior fuel because your body um, likes it. It's good for your brain, it's good for your heart, um, it's good for your mood, it's good for your um, nervous system. Um, and so, <laughs> the other thing about ketones is like people, when they lose weight, they wanna burn fat, right? Mm -hmm. Well, when you think of fat burning, just think of ketosis, because it's the same exact thing. So when you're burning fat, you're in ketosis. When you're in ketosis, you're burning fat. Um, the great majority of people that are trying to lose weight, they're not actually, burning ketones, they're not actually using ketones. They're just, they lose some water weight and then they plateau and they struggle. But the average person that's not overweight is carrying around a lot of fat, like about 100,000 calories of fat. If you take an obese person, they're, taking, they're carrying a lot more. So we have this huge amount of stored calories that we should be tapping into because we're sh we should be burning fat. But a lot of people don't realize that um, the way to tap into that is through using ketones uh, as your fuel and getting your body to break that down. Hmm. Okay, good. So, why, you know, you see other diets advertised and, and, you know, there's weight loss and things like that. Why is this keto diet any different or how would you compare it to other diets? Well, I think it's, it's a lot better simply because it handles a really, really, really big problem that most most people have with majority of health problems are related to um, a condition where you have too much insulin. Not just diabetes, but inflammatory conditions, the fatty liver, um, all sorts of things, heart issues. And so this high insulin is behind a lot of these problems. And so ket ketones, or going on a ketogenic diet, handles that specific issue. And when you combine it with intermittent fasting, you have two powerful tools to really help to regulate this root problem behind so many health problems. So the benefit of this diet is it handles a lot of health problems indirectly. Okay, great. Is it hard to do? Well, not if you do it correctly. <laughs> um, if you do it, in, like people that do sort of keto, they sort of get on it so they don't bring their carbs down low enough, um, they struggle and they don't get into ketosis as fast. But ideally, if you do it correctly, like I teach people, um, you should be able to get into ketosis within three days. And you shouldn't have any of the side effects that people say that you might have, like keto fatigue or keto flu. That's just basically you're not doing it correctly with the right healthy nutrients. So the transition could be very smooth if you know how to do it right. So no, it's not hard. Okay, and you mentioned side effects. That, you, know, there's, you said there's things that you'll experience if you're not doing it correctly, but what if you're doing it correctly? Are there, is there any drawback? Is there anything negative that you could experience from doing healthy keto diet the way you yeah. well, describe? I think I'm going to be totally transparent. There are some serious side effects to this. Your, your pants will flow off, fall off because you lose too much weight. You end up spending a lot of money on new clothes, which is very expensive. Um, of course, when you're doing intermittent fasting, you're cutting down like maybe $300 on your shopping bill, so maybe that can compensate. Um, but um, you're going to have more energy, so you're going to end up having to do more work around the house. You know, your spouse your, will have you do more work because all this extra energy. Um, but I'm being very sarcastic. Uh, the benefits are huge. Um, there, I have not found any drawbacks. Um, the drawbacks or the side effects of being on a high-carb diet are huge. You know, fatigue. And the other big benefit of, of keto is like you're, you're, you don't, 
you're not hungry anymore. So you can do it long term. It's sustainable. Well, that sounds pretty good. Yeah. I, I think <laughs> I it's, might try it. You may want to think about it, Karen. You may want to think it. about doing it. So, okay, what if you're just starting out and you're, you're, you're brand new? Yeah. You know, what's, what's a really simple way to get started? How do you know what to eat and what not to eat? It can be overwhelming. Right. Well, I won't get into the details. I'll give you the big overview. It's real simply bring your carbs down between 20 and 50 grams a day. So it's low carb. You want to bring, but we're not counting vegetables. So bring your vegetables up to like seven, at least seven cups a day. Okay, so we do that. Have a moderate amount of protein. You know, three to, three to eight ounces or three to six ounces, depending on how big you are and how fast your metabolism per meal. Okay, and then it's high fat. So high fat, moderate protein, low carb, large amounts of vegetables. That's the simplicity of it right there. Now to, to get the details, then you can, you can go uh, on the website and really dig into the specific questions, but that's the simplicity of it. Okay. Okay, good. Um, and you, you mentioned something about how long you can do it. What if your goal, which I think for most people, their goal is weight loss, mm -hmm. although there are so many other health benefits, but what if you achieve your weight goal? Would you continue? Yeah, it's kind of funny. Like, People are like, hey, I just lost weight, so I'm going to go back to what I was doing before and gain it all back. I'm like, no, this is a long-term thing because the benefits of longevity, health, cardiovascular, cognition are all um, part of it. So when you do it and you feel good, you'll, you'll have that realization that you need to stick. This is a long-term thing, and it's not uncomfortable at all. Dieting is uncomfortable because you're hungry all the time. This one is sustainable because your hunger goes away, and that's really what makes it um, easy to do in the long run. Well, it must be easy to do because it's hugely popular and yeah. not just in the United States, all over the world. You can read articles and see posts and things like that. Why do you think it's so popular? Well, it's definitely popular because it works. If it, was, if it didn't work, it probably wouldn't be that popular. Um, something that works, you're going to tell your friends, your family, it's like life-changing. Um, that's why it's spreading virally right now all over the place because it simply works. Um, and so a lot of people are doing it. Um, I think it's, I know it's not a fad. It'll be around for a long time. Well, it's been around for a long time. It, it actually isn't a new no, it discovery. Has, <laughs> right. It's been around since like the 20s for epilepsy. But what happened is like, then you had the Atkins, but the Atkins was a higher amount of protein. Uh, he didn't really talk a lot about ketones at that point, but even though he did a little bit. And then there was an isolation of ketones and like how can we actually just have a diet that is like just targeting that and that's w when, you know, that's where you see it a lot now with um, moderate protein, high fat, low carb. And some people just call it low carb, high fat. Same thing. Cool. Yeah. Very All good right. questions, Karen. Yeah. Well, this is social media. That's right. So um, let's see if this works. Lori. Um, you're calling from Virginia. You had a question. Go ahead. Uh, yes, my name is Lori. I'm coming from Virginia. And I am a adrenal, and I am going through menopause, and I am taking your adrenal supplements and your estrogen. I am getting, I've been on your program since the 10th of this year, and I've lost 17 pounds. Ooh. And, but I'm dealing with, I'm dealing with, daily, all day dizziness, moody, and I'm grumpy, and diarrhea. And I've tried to eliminate things to um, try to figure out what the diarrhea issue is, but okay. I'm at a loss. So I have a couple quick questions. Just answer them very rapidly for me. Um, are you consuming okay. anything with sugar alcohols at all, like a little keto bombs or anything with sugar alcohols, like erythritol, xylitol, mannitol, any of those? I had been, but that was like a couple of weeks ago. I stopped it in my coffee, thinking it was that, but it okay. never stopped. The okay. diarrhea didn't stop. Okay. Are you doing any MCT oil or coconut oil? Um, I haven't done it. No, not all the time. Just a smidge to add it to some of my supplements to get it to go down. Okay. But that, not an all-the-time thing anymore. Okay. So put that yeah. aside too, because that can create diarrhea. Are you doing a lot of vegetables that you're not that, that you haven't done in the past? Is that, is that like a new thing? 
and see I stop my kale shakes, which is not a normal thing for me. Okay. Um, I stopped them Sunday thinking I could help get rid of the diarrhea. I want to continue them because I felt better, but that's why I'm weeding out too. Not sure if it was that. I don't think it was. Okay. Because I still got it. Okay. Are you um, craving salt? Yes. Okay. Mm. Yes. I feel like I am. Okay, so here's what you do. Himalayan pink sea salt. Start increasing that uh, in the diet because um, when you actually have adrenal fatigue going into keto and you do keto, you lose the water, the adrenals need salt to recharge them. So if you don't have enough salt, you're going to feel a little tired, a little dizzy, maybe a little lethargic. So. All you have to do is increase the sea salt, you're going to brighten up. But don't eat things like potato chips to increase the sea salt. Just have, like, put it on your food. I like the Himalayan sea salt. That would be really, really good. Now, with the diarrhea, you're going to be losing a lot of minerals too, trace minerals. So you're going to have to put that back. I think you're going to need to um, um, do more of a, like a carnivore for a month or two because there might be a little bit of a imbalance with, your, with the microbes and um, and you might have a little SIBO. You can look that up. And uh, so when you hear you're adding all the fiber, you know, that could be an issue. You, I just, I'm not saying to totally do it, but just try it to see if that helps you. Watch my recent video that I did on diarrhea uh, on what you need to take to stop it and to uh, maybe you, you definitely need a probiotic and um, blackberries and kefir. That will help you. And um, maybe some psyllium seeds. So do that, Lori, and... Um, and stay consistent with the out without taking the other things that I mentioned as well. Um, and let me know how you do next week, okay? Thanks for your call. All right, Karen. Okay, there's some good questions here. First of all, lots of people, I would say lots, more than a couple, are asking how much cod liver oil, what form of cod liver oil. You want to just answer that? Um, what I would do is I would... Um, Unless you can find um, a tablet without maltodextrin that they put with it, uh, you want to get either the, in the pearls or you want to get it in a liquid. Now, the ideal one that you can get would be um, the virgin cod liver oil. It's a bit expensive, but if you can afford it, that would be the first choice. However, the other cod liver oil that you can get on the market that is, um, of course, non-GMO and all that, which is not Usually it's not going to be a problem. It's, um, it's not well, like wild caught. That would be awesome. Um, you know, even if it's in liquid, that you're going to benefit from that greatly too. So um, you can do that, but try to get the version if you can't. Just get a higher quality wild caught. And how much? I would honestly, you know, it really depends on your situation. But uh, like a tablespoon a day would be awesome, or a couple of those little pearls per day, maybe three of those per day, that would be good. You don't need to take more than that. Now, the cat, the the soft gels that I had were like big honkers. Yeah, right. I had two. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, that's probably not even a tablespoon in those. No, no. Okay, good. Now, here's a really interesting question. Well, before you answer that, oh. I'm going to ask a quiz, and then we'll go right to this question okay. so people can answer Fair it. Fair enough. All right. Quiz. Out of all the things that you can do to improve your health, out of all the things you can do, what is the cheapest thing you can do to improve your health? <laughs> this is an easy question, guys. Let's see if oh, you can get an answer. Come on, that's what too is the, easy. What is the cheapest way to improve your health of anything that you can do? Come on, guys. You Kay. got this. All right. Now you can go to this. Okay. For the college students out there, pay attention. Gosh. Can I win money too? No. <laughs> um, okay, so someone asked what kind of salad, or what, it was mm -hmm. worded funny, but what kind of a salad gives you 10 cups? So, and then people are saying, well, you have to have a wide variety of vegetables and the whole mm -hmm. thing. I mean, my two cents on that, mm -hmm. you know what you eat every day and what I eat every day. Right. And... It's just a huge bowl of salad. It's like, what do you like? Right. There's, um, there's, um, if you can mimic the type of vegetation 
that is similar to what you ate in the Paleolithic times, caveman times. That would be the ideal scene. But Sautéed Brussels sprouts? Not even that. Um, no, you know, like kidding. different, different um, herbs and different, like, I love to go to the farmer's market. They have this blend of salad that's like all over the place from all these different things I've never had versus romaine lettuce. Right. So if you get a mixed greens, that's better than just one. Um, and that's what I would do. Now, as far as the amounts go, it's just, just take a, a little handful, you know, that's one cup, and do that seven times. Now, it's not that hard. Karen, you, we gotta get a video of this. You, you make a salad, it's probably 10 cups. It doesn't, but you chop it down so it looks like it's three cups. But you could knock that out and it tastes good. And in fact, you even want more. But it's not hard to do once you try it. And, but I think people don't know how much that is. They're, they're thinking like this huge bowl and they're like chewing for hours. Like, no. no. Yeah, that's why I use the salad scissors because I don't want to deal with that. Yeah. And I just happen to love arugula. I also love uh, red cabbage, the more purple cabbage. The more bitter it is, <coughs> the better. Bitter is better. That's right. Bitter, better. <laughs> Uh, but there is this idea, and someone else uh, posted on here, oh, uh, Elena, dandelion greens. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's the best. That is really great. If that you, is the and best. If you like that, uh, uh, some arugula is very mild. Some arugula is so peppery, it's almost like a mustard green. No one likes dandelion greens. They eat it for health <laughs> reasons. But oh. I will say that the dandelion greens are bitter, and they're hard to chew. You're like... Well, that's why you need the hours. salad scissors and, and mix it in with other things. But a point came up here. Um, uh, you need a super wide variety of vegetables. And then someone else is saying, you know, we live where we live. We don't have a variety like that. So maybe we can't do keto. No, something is better than nothing. Something is better than nothing. You, just getting that the principle <coughs> of more greens and getting rid of the carbs and the sugar, right. the, the grains and the sugar. If you just think that, like, okay, I'm just going to go through my day. And I'm going to make sure that I don't have anything that's a grain or anything that has sugar. I mean, you just have to start really simple. And honestly, when I started, uh, I really revolted against what I couldn't have. So what I did was focus on what I needed to add to my diet instead, instead of, of what to avoid. Instead of what to so avoid the or brownies what I can't and the have. donuts, you just <laughs> added some salad to that. Right? I, it might sound funny, but what I focused on was getting seven cups of vegetables a day. And, and I didn't focus on anything else. But when I told you to have something more green, I didn't mean pistachio ice cream and lime green jello. I meant you salad. Have to be, you have to be specific. I know. Sometimes I'll have to clarify those questions. He meant green tea ice cream. Green tea green ice cream. Green tea ice cream, oh. yeah. Or a pistachio <sighs> ice cream. Oh, yeah. Gelato. Okay, that's just not fair. Now, I just, have to, I, just have to say, I just have to say this one thing, and then I'll zip it, okay? okay. There is a, a new keto dessert that we're coming out with in these little sa sachets that is to die for, and it's pistachio cream. And you know why, why it's so good? is because it has pistachio butter in it. And it's like, wow, it's going to be really good. I know people are going to be asking when it's going to be available, so it's going to take a little bit because, uh, you know, we're to make that, it just takes time, but just stay tuned. That's going to be a very, very delicious treat after your meal, not as a snack. Yes. Okay. So ahead. here's one more question that yeah. followed the whole salad vegetable yeah. conversation on uh, social media here. So if I have this huge salad, won't that kick me out of keto? The thing about keto is that you, um, you want things that don't stimulate insulin. There's really only two, two things that won't stimulate insulin as far as food. That's fat and fiber. So vegetable is mostly fiber. It's not very sweet. It's bitter, actually, some of the vegetables that we're talking about. So that it's not going to really mess with your keto too much. Um, but, we, but if you're doing fasting, we prefer if you're doing a big salad, do it at the meal, but if you're doing a, uh, a little bit of a uh, green drink or something like that, it's not that big of a deal. So. Good questions, though. Yeah. It does kick you out of fasting. Right, but not ketosis. But not necessarily ketosis. Right, unless it raises insulin. There you go. And but you gotta watch your dressings. But if you actually because increase. Because dressings are full of sugar sometimes, so you really have to read the label. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. But if you, um, if you look at the calorie aspect, because the cal if you have food with a bit too many calories, regardless, that will activate something in the small intestine, something called GIP, which will activate insulin. So again, you know, you have to learn the different points to this. But, but we're not going to count calories. We're not counting calories, but I'm just saying that if you want to do a true fast, just do a true fast without anything. Okay. But I'll st I have some really good videos coming down the pike with that one, too. Okay. So you had asked a question, and this yeah. was a while ago, so I now I have to go back and see what these guys answered. I said, what's the cheapest thing you can do to increase your health? Mm -hmm. Let's see if anyone got it right. You find it? Well, if Sydney's answering the question, uh, let's see. I all right, you look at that, Karen. I need to answer a question look. from yeah. Eva. You're from New Jersey. You had a question. Go ahead. Oh, hello. Hello. Um, yes. Um, I have Hashimoto. Okay. I am 55, and I have to lose another last 10 pounds, which um, look like I'm strugg struggling with it a lot. Okay. Something is missed. I'm thinking about going one meal a day. But also, I am afraid because of my Hashimoto, if, uh, if, I, if this is safe for me Got it. to okay. do it. Good question. 90% um, of all hypothyroid conditions are Hashimoto's. It's autoimmune. Um, there's some really important things you need to do for that. Uh, one is the selenium. You want to increase your selenium a good amount. There's some hardcore research on this that will show you that because it's an autoimmune, you have a lot of free radicals going on, a lot of inflammation. The selenium is the key nutrient to uh, counter a lot of that. And you can even diminish hydrogen peroxide being generated uh, and a lot of other free radicals in the, in the thyroid. So I would take selenium, okay? And I did a video on this recently. You can look it up. Um, but I would for sure do OMAD because it's going to reduce your inflammation. Just make sure that one meal a day that you eat is really nutrient dense because the thing with low thyroid is that um, if you do keto with low amounts of nutrients, that's what messes with the thyroid. So as long as you're doing a good amount of nutrients, you may need to supplement, um, you're going to be fine. But I think that would be very smart because your inflammation is going to go down, your immune system is going to get better, but definitely add selenium. All right, Karen, what are, we, what are people answer, answering? Uh, <laughs> I'm enjoying Facebook today. You guys are awesome. Um, so, so are you YouTubers, but there's some f funny answers over here. Um, most people, both on YouTube and Facebook, are saying fasting or intermittent fasting. Some are saying uh, keto. A couple people on Facebook are saying cook at home. I like that. I like that answer. I like that. Thank you for that answer. Uh, Exercise, and my next favorite answer is sleep. Why? Sleep? Although I guess that when you sleep, you are also fasting. So that's a twofer. <laughs> you get a so twofer. The, the thing is that, uh, the thing is that I'm, I'm specifically mentioning cheap way cheap. to get healthy. What's the cheapest way to get healthy? Cheap, not drink, to is eat. It, what about drink water? You think drinking water? No, no, just fast. It's not eating. Yeah, exactly. That's the answer. So it's very, Most very cheap. You can that. save a lot of money when you don't eat, and um, you get a lot of health benefits. But of course, it's not the healthiest thing if you do it too long. If you fast for three <laughs> years, that could be a problem. Um, so I'm, I'm just talking about a, um, a period of time. Right. But it's interesting, though, isn't it? Just fascinating. And by the way, guys, if you haven't come to our, sum our last year, two years of summits, last several years of summits, you need to come to this one because we're going to be emphasizing fasting and intermittent fasting. A lot of the speakers coming are going to emphasize that. It's just going to be hot. Um, you're going to learn stuff that you've never heard before. It's going to be very viable. It's going to be in Maryland uh, at the Gaylord Hotel. We will send out a video and a promo on it next week. Um, it's going to be at the end of August, the 29th and 30th. So, 28th, 29th, 20 starts well, on the Friday. 28th. Friday, Friday free registration yeah. starts at 1 o'clock on a Friday. Come early. 
You want to come early because Saturday morning we start right at 8 o'clock. It is a very early morning. So most people, the vast majority of people, show up on Friday. And then they go out into National Harbor or into D.C. and have a blast on Friday. The true statement, Karen. It's true. All right, Special so room rates, too. Mar Marcos yeah. is calling from Boston. Marcos. How Wicked. Awesome. Hey, how you doing? Welcome from Beantown, hey. guys. How you, how you doing? Good. Great. Um, my, my question is, um, you know, I, first of all, Dr. Burr, I love that your, I love your video on the coronavirus and how, you know, the, uh, the flu, the regular flu kills a lot more people than the coronavirus and to be mindful of that. Um, here in Massachusetts, we have about dozens of people that are under observation right now, but from this angle, I'd like to ask you, um, if you are diabetic and you're not very young, but you're not very old either, uh, say you're 50 years old, um, what are some of the ways you can do to boost your immune system? Um, is keto a big thing? Is intermittent fasting a big thing? I do a, uh, a 20 hours on, four, four hours off, and my wife does like a 72 hour. Uh, so in relation to diabetics, uh, what should you do? We also take, uh, you know, K2 and vitamin D. Awesome. Thanks for calling, Marcos. So, yeah, there's, um, um, you know, the people that get infected with a virus, uh, there's certain people that it, they, they're, like, immune to it. Other people get infected. They don't have problems. Other people that get infected, they have problems. The healthier you are, um, the more you're going to bulletproof. I will be releasing a video this next week on all the sneaky little devious strategies these viruses do to hack your own immune system. So you might want to watch it because they are devious. Uh, a virus is not really alive. It is not really dead. It can only leach onto your, your own cells um, and act as a copy machine if your cell membranes are weak. Okay, So, so this relates, relates to how can you strengthen the cell? Well, probably starting at the top of the list as far as improvement in immune system integrity, it would be fasting. That's number one. Number two is low, low carb because the sugar um, makes you more susceptible to getting viruses. Number three, I hope you're sitting down for this one, stress. When you're under stress, um, you're more susceptible to viruses. In fact, in practice, I, I take all these cases coming in and so many, uh, case after case, viral infections, you know, like, okay, so when did it start? What happened right before that? A stress event. Stress is a big factor. So whatever you can do to minimize stress, that would be good. Long walks, you know, get out of town, go on a vacation. <laughs> but uh, all these things are very, very Stop important. Stop watching the news. Stop watching the news. Thank you, Karen. Um, watch something positive um, because I'm telling you, they're really hyping this thing up. They're pushing this up and it's creating more fear. Fear. Well, that, you know, that's just not good. That's not a healthy state to be in. Uh, if you're diabetic, um, y you may want to um, add more um, things like antioxidants, like vitamin C, for example, a natural food based vitamin C to help your immune system. It's probably the most important one as an antiviral. Garlic is very, very, very important. Zinc is really important. Vitamin D is very important. Um, one of the things that the uh, these viruses do to um, invade your body is they know that vitamin D controls the immune system. So they go in there and they shut down your ability to absorb vitamin D. So unless you take more, you're, you're more susceptible to getting this virus. So that was a long answer, but that's what I would do if I were you, Marcos. Also watch my video I, I did recently on boosting your immune system. Okay, because I cover all that. All right, Karen. Give me, give me a really easy question. Do you have any easy ones? Because uh, these guys are really challenging. I me. know. They do come up with really good questions. Um, here is uh, something near and dear to me. How can you support or eliminate um, shingles pain? You don't mm -hmm. want to support pain, but you know what I mean. How can you, you have shingles. It is very painful. I had when I was a young kid, and uh, which is unusual, but it's very painful. Yeah. Um, 
It's very painful. The, it's a viral infection, and it comes out when you're stressed. Um, there's a couple things that you can do. If, you, if it doesn't invade, break the skin, and it just hurts, it's starting, you can press on the opposite nerve, which is usually, it's going to be in the back or something. It's usually on following a, a, a rib around there. If you work on the opposite side, it tends to actually reduce the pain intensity. Um, but there's some things you can do. The biggest thing is to take uh, zinc really fast. Mm. Take zinc is very, very important. There's a couple other things too, alpha lipoic acid, um, and then there's something else called NAC. Um, you can get those as supplements and take them to reduce the severity and the duration of that viral infection. But really, the biggest thing is just to simply and very easily avoid all stress and you're good to go. But the stress is the activator. The, yeah, okay. You haven't had any outbreaks for years. No, I, g I got shingles when I was 16 years old and it was really, really bad case, but I haven't, right. that's the last I've seen of it, thank goodness. And um, I'm doing keto and intermittent fasting to yeah, that's gonna be avoid hot. experiencing that again because yeah. it was terrible. Yeah, I know. And it was after a stress event. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, Veronica, she's calling from Iowa. Are you there, Veronica? Hi, I am. Hi, Thank what you part of so much for You're welcome. What part of Iowa I'm, are you from? I, I'm actually in Lomore, but I, I do go down to uh, Palmer Chiropractic Davenport, Clinic. Davenport, Iowa. So I bet wow. you're familiar with those guys. Yes, I, I've been there. I, that's where I went to school. I have a lot of great memories. Yep, yep, great place. I'd be lost without them, I'll tell you. Yeah. Well, I'm a 66-year-old obviously female, I'm postmenopausal. Mm -hmm. um, I've had a lot of surgeries in my life, lost both shoulders, both knees. Can still exercise fairly well. Been on keto for three years. Um, I do fasting, I've been on fasting for six months. Uh, that's anywhere from 20 to 22 hours a day. Okay. Um, but no matter what I do, no matter how hard I try, I cannot get rid of this midriff bulge. Mm. Okay. What am I doing wrong? So I have a question. Do you do keto very strictly, or is it you do it most of the time, but you do go off a little bit? Wow, if I go off, it would be possibly once a month. Okay. Okay, next question. Um, when you are fasting and you're about to eat, are you really hungry for that meal or not? Sometimes, um, most of the time it's just okay. It's 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 in the scheduled time to eat, and I go ahead and prepare my meal and eat. Okay, and as far as your past goes, you've had surgeries, you're postmenopausal recently, and you also do you have a history of um, maybe doing carbs for many years and possibly having insulin resistance? Yeah, I do. Um, that's that's been a problem. Yes. Okay, so this is, I think this is what you need to do, Veronica. I, I'm gonna take the worst case scenario, and I've dealt with that quite a few times. You have people that, you know, they, they're postmenopausal, women have more estrogen men, they have all these things that are countering them hormonally wise, thyroid could be involved, and now they just can't get rid of that, uh, that, that stubborn weight. This is what you're gonna have to do. Um, you're gonna have to, do OMAD every other day. And I've, I've recommended this to several people and it's worked really, really well because the principle is don't eat unless you're hungry. So I would ride the wave and go as long as you can. So have a really good meal every other day and that's just maybe what you might need because the metabolism is too slow now um, and, and it's just your body is just like very efficient at holding onto that fat so you're going to have to kind of extend it longer. And I did recommend that to um, some people recently, and that's the only thing that worked. So it's one meal every other day. Now, if you happen to do that, and all of a sudden you're not hungry at the second day, you may want to ride the wave and just do it a little bit longer and just go every third day and, and just try it out. But obviously, don't push it too much. Take nutrients as well. But I think you're going to have to do that um, right now. To, to lose that last bit of weight. Thanks, Veronica. 
On that note, Karen. On that note, do save the date, August 28th through the 30th. Plan to come to DC, uh, to the Gaylord in Maryland, for Dr. Berg's Healthy Keto Summit 2020. Save the date, cross everything off, come for a long weekend, have a blast here. The, um, all the promo will be coming out hopefully next week. Yes. And have, have a great week. Have a great week. We'll see you next week.